This is an immortal bullet game played between Maxime Vashilagrav with white and Hikaru Nakamura with black. So it was played on chess.com, the full details are on screen, the players had one minute plus one second to move, let's have a look what happened here. So e4 from Maxime, e5 from Hikaru, and now knight c3, the so-called Vienna game, and after knight c6, Maxime goes pawn f4, a king's gambit-esque move, but the knight's not yet on f3. So Hikaru accepts the gambit, now we had knight to f3, and Hikaru plays super aggressively here. He goes pawn g5, which not only holds the pawn on f4, but also threatens to push g4 here. Now I'm highlighting here with this h3 move that white could have stopped the pawn coming there to g4, but Maxime goes super aggressive here. He plays bishop to c4, he lets Hikaru kick on, and now you can see that the knight doesn't actually have any good forward jumps. Those squares are covered. You don't want to go back to g1. So what does MVL do? He castles the king. He gambits an entire piece here. And now he doesn't even recapture that pawn with the queen. That is the best move. Instead, he plays this craziness. Bishop takes on f7 check. You know, when you're sat facing this as black, you know it's a load of rubbish. You want to beat the guy, but you have to prove it because you're about to get attacked. So the king captured that one. Now Maxime took on f3. We had queen h4 from Hikaru, great move. So you don't let the queen just take that pawn with check. And if white starts going g3, which the computer does prefer as its top move, well then you open up the king so you can check. Let's say the king comes here, and then you can drop back here, cover the pawn if the queen takes, or if you take with the pawn, well now you're closing down the f-file. So it's all good for black here essentially, but Maxime didn't go pawn g3, instead he plays pawn d4. You know, he's absolutely just chucking wood on the fire here. He wants to blow Hikaru off the board. And the idea is that after knight takes, which Hikaru played, well now you've developed that bishop with tempo because the queen slides across, picks up a tempo on the knight, and after it retreats here, then we chop here. It looks like you're losing a piece, but after knight recaptures, there's knight d5 taking advantage of this pin down the f-file. So bishop d6 was played to cover, and now g3 is the only way to actually recoup the piece. We had takes first, bishop recaptures, now pawn g3, the queen had to go away, and now Maxime takes back but he's still a piece down here. You know, black is better, but once again, you have to prove it. So king e7 played, good move. Now queen d4, hits that unprotected rook. So the knight develops to f6 here, and now rook f5 played, kicks the queen, and you have to keep the connection with the knight here. So say the queen came to g7, well now there's rook a to f1, this didn't happen by the way. Again, this knight's attacked. If you protect with the rook, well then e5 is really strong. The knight's got nowhere to go and then you're picking up the rook here. And if instead you go king to d8 in this position, you don't protect, well okay, now we take, we win back a piece, white is doing quite well. So you do have to be careful as black and that's why here, after rook to f5, we just had queen takes on f5 by Naka, the pawn recaptured, but now where you did have an advantage for Hikaru when you run it with the engine, that's now actually gone. It's just a level position, real dogfight, and Hikaru's down on time as we can see on screen. So now d5 was played, opening up that bishop to capture here, and rookie one check was technically the best move, but the queen checked instead, the king slid to f7, now rookie one was played, but the reason this isn't so good is that black can now bring a rook to the e-file, swap those rooks. So rook e8 was played, the queen took here with check, bishop d7, and now you don't really have better but to swap that rook off the board. This rook recaptured. Yes, the queen picks up a second pawn, but now Hikaru can start activating his pieces. And I find this moment actually really quite instructive. So Hikaru goes rook e2, going after these pawns, but actually his best was to check, say king f2, and then drop back here. And the whole idea is that if white takes on a7, which is the best move, well now you can take on f5 with the bishop, you open up this attack, and black's doing okay here because you've taken this critical f5 pawn and liberated that bishop, brought it into the game like this. 
The reason this is important is that after Rook to e2, which was played, Maxime took here, Hikaru took here, but now in this variation, White can actually go pawn to g4, you hold this pawn on f5, and the problem now is that Black can't really unravel the pieces. If you take with the knight, well then you're losing your bishop with check. If now Black takes this unprotected pawn, well then we go g5, we kick the knight away, then we pick up the bishop on the next move, and so you'd have to go something like h6 here, but then you can go h3, solidify the chain, and White's doing quite well. But we didn't have this move of g4, you know, it's only bullet chess, but I thought it was just an instructional moment. Instead, queen d4 was played to hold this pawn, but it's actually less important, because now Hikaru takes this one, and he's bringing the bishop into the game, there'll be problems around his king. So a4 was played by MVL, he wants to run that outside passer down, that's his main counterplay. Bishop e4 played, and now if you keep going with a5, the problem is that the knight hits g4, it now controls these squares, the bishop controls this one, and so you're threatening to actually mate, and white's in a lot of trouble here. So that's why pawn h3 was played, stops the knight jumping in, but now Hikaru switches plans, he hits this one on g3, the queen came to e5 defending here, but this was a terrible blunder, takes the position from zeros drawn to about minus eight, now the way white should play here is queen a7. Again, no criticism, you can't necessarily see this in a short time control, but the idea is that after say queen g6, uh, king g6 rather, you keep checking on these dark squares, king g5, and then you can hit e3, this is the key. And if the king ever steps here, well you're running into this fork with the pawn, if you would start stepping back here to the back rank, well still you can start checking down here and all this stuff. So it is actually a draw by perpetual if you play like this. But we didn't have queen a7 check. Instead queen e5 played, holds this pawn, but now rook g2 check. If you come to the corner here, well this is actually just forcing you to give up the queen, completely lost. And if instead you come to f1, which is what MVL played, well now we still check here, the king is driven this way, now check on e2, and here MVL actually resigned the game, because if you move the king here, well we're just checking from c2 with the bishop, king c1, we pick up the queen, completely one end game. So a nice turnaround from Hikaru, he was under pressure, gave up the queen, and then proved it at the end. If you want to see an immortal game between Ali Reza Firuzja and Daniel Naroditsky, click here. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.